Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today has appeared on MTV's wildly popular series, The Challenge. Now he's the new host of NBC's First Look, which airs Saturday nights after SNL. Johnny Bananas is here. Well, we actually met in Minneapolis. You were doing American Ninja Warrior. Now, what people do not know, and I want you to tell them the truth, the things you were doing in the days leading up to Ninja Warrior made it almost impossible for you to be amazing on the course. True. What were you doing? Uh, filming the challenge. I had just flown back from Africa. So beyond the jet lag, uh, we had just got done filming season 17 of the challenge, mm -hmm. which was a nightmare. Wait, lightly. why was it a nightmare? Because I remember you saying this, that you had gone through some things with your body, especially too, that it and was mind. hard. I mean, oh, and, and soul. The thing, about, the thing a lot of people don't understand about the challenge is like people, it is physical, mm -hmm. right? The physical component of the challenge is like maybe 10%. The rest of it is, it's, it's mental. It's a mental, it's psychological warfare for 10 straight weeks. And that season was particularly rough on me because now, you know, being who I am, what I've accomplished on the show, it's everyone's prerogative now every season to take me out. So yeah. I basically, my back was against the wall from day one. Uh, you know, my partner was physically assaulted by another cast member that season. And we were basically, you know, public enemy number one the entire season. And we had to just fight our way out the entire time. So after 10 weeks of that, um, you know, we then stayed for an extra, you know, week and a half after the show was over, partied way too hard in South Africa. Uh, I flew home. Um, I mean, and already just from the time change and the jet lag, that was enough. But then with the 10 weeks of, you know, what I, the, the, the psychological torture I went through, the hangover, the jet lag, I was already in a bad state. And then yeah. two days later, first looks like, oh yeah, you're going to Minnesota to do American Ninja Warrior. Which I've always wanted to do, by the way. Okay. It's one of those things that like has been on my bucket list. Um, and you know, you watch it on TV, and American Ninja Warrior is one of those things where it's like, especially me being who I am, doing what I've done on the challenge. It's like you watch it on TV, and I can do that. Swing from monkey bars and grab onto this and climb this, and you know, it is a thousand times more difficult than I ever expected it to be. So, so the, the kind of things that you do on the challenge. Did those kind of skills translate at all into what you were able to do on Ninja Warrior? Absolutely. I mean, well, I think like just getting me confident enough to know that I could do it. The thing, the thing about Ninja Warrior that's different from the challenge though is the challenge, a lot of the obstacles that we do require more, there, there are agility style challenges, but a lot of it is strength and a lot of it is endurance. Whereas American Ninja Warrior is about being a ninja. And you literally, I mean, the margin of error on those obstacles is razor thin. The guys are built differently too. Like I, if I ever was serious about doing American Ninja Warrior again, I would have to like drop 30 pounds because there's like 15 obstacles in a row and these guys are up there. It's upper body strength. It's, but but it's, it's grip strength, but it's also, mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of the guys were a lot more wiry and a lot and, and mm -hmm. smaller. I mean, it's just, it just sure. favors smaller, more wiry guys because you just don't and have- ladies. And ladies, guys and girls. Uh, because you just don't have as much weight to carry around. And that, you know, works against you after a while. So i not going to lie. I showed up. I'm like, I'm going to smoke this thing. I'm, you know, I'm going to make it to the end. Whoever this hunter guy is, I'm going to destroy him. <laughs> when I met him, I mean, the guy was, you know, he, he literally looked like he stopped growing at the age of four. So I'm like, all right, this, there's no problem. And then when I got out there on the course, um, besides the, the, the lights and the, the glitz and the glam and the, thousands of people sitting there watching you and all that pressure, you know, knowing you only get one shot to do it. Um, and then getting out there and being, until you've actually put your hands on these apparatuses, you don't know what they're gonna feel like. Yeah. You can watch it on TV and be like, I can do that. But it's like, it's all about technique. And I just didn't have enough time to learn and develop the proper technique to do it. But I will say, I'm gonna come back. I'm oh, you are. I'm stronger ninja next time. Yeah. Celebrity ninja, I need maybe. a second crack at that because I, I, I let a lot of people down. So before you were on the challenge, you were part of Real World Key West. Yeah. That is where we all were introduced to mm -hmm. Johnny Bananas. Mm -hmm. How did you get on that show? So I didn't actually start watching the rule until I got to college. So I went to Penn State. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated in 05. So by about the uh, winter semester of 05, when most people have their exit strategy out of college figured out, I'm going to work for whatever on Wall Street. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to whatever, save the animals. I'm sitting here like, 
I have no idea when, it's like February, January, February, my senior year. I started watching it because there was this girl that I kind of had a crush on who had a, who was a huge fan of the real world. And every time I was like, let's hang out. She's like, I can't tonight. Me and my friends are watching the real world. So finally I was just like, well, let me like see what this show's all about. And like, you know, yeah. maybe I'll like have something to talk to her about. So I started watching, it was the real world. It was the season in Philadelphia, real world Philadelphia. And Landon and MJ were the guys on it. And I'm in college, right? So like that's kind of like the mindset I'm in. Party, happy-go-lucky, you know. Uh, and I'm like, wait a minute, so let me get this straight. These guys just live in a house, go out and drink, party, hook up, and have a great time. And this is like, they get notoriety for this. And paid. And paid. I'm going to send in an application immediately. So I made an audition tape uh, on my college campus, um, <laughs> dressed as Scooby-Doo. In okay. front of old, in front of there's this very iconic building called Old Main. It's like a clock tower, and I use that as my backdrop, dressed as Scooby Doo. Um, and I end up getting cast on the Real World after this. And it's funny because then, you know, five, six, whatever, eight years later, Barack Obama went to Penn State, gave a speech at Penn State, used the exact same backdrop that I used for my audition video, and so I'm like, yo, he was a fan. Oh, me. you think he saw what yep. you did and oh wow. So okay. Shout out. Look at you. Shout out to Obama. Hey man, I'll let you take that one. <laughs> I'll let you take my backdrop. How different are you now than the bananas that was on that show? So I was 22 mm -hmm. when I started. Um, uh, so I mean, I'll just put it this way. I'm glad social media didn't exist when I first started doing my challenges because, and the real world, because I did a lot of dumb adolescent <laughs> that um, I've obviously learned from and grown from, but I didn't have to face the backlash that a lot of people face these days. Like I was able to take my licks in private a little bit, you know? I feel like a lot of people, a lot of my fans saw a lot of themselves in me or, and, and, and I was kind of, they were able to live vicariously through me. A lot of guys who did take the traditional route and went to college and got a nine to five job and got married and had a family it was like, here I was, it's like they're almost trying to live out their fantasies kind of based on like who I was and what I was doing. Being on reality television, traveling the world, um, you know, partying, competing, just doing guy, guy stuff, you know? Um, but what's crazy about the challenge is it really does, you're in a, you're in a, a, a an alternate reality in a way mm -hmm. where this environment they place you in, it's not real, but it's like you're constantly surrounded by People in the same, in that same mindset, who are on reality TV, who are young, who are you know, adolescent, young adults. So it, it almost like prevents you in a way from growing up. I've always said that like the challenge, like I feel like the challenge is my never never land, and I'm like Peter Pan. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.